In Camera Basics, we're going to be tackling a few very simple things, but also some very important elements before we get to the remainder of the class. Talk a little bit about what type of camera this is and the sensor in it, where the major controls are, and then the important part is getting the file format set right, something everyone needs to have correct. All right, first off, we have a mirrorless camera, interchangeable lens type model. We have lots of different lenses that you can put on it. In each of the lenses is an aperture unit. And this is one way of controlling the amount of light coming in the lens. And so that's a part of each lens. From there, light is going to come in towards the sensor. And it's going to get stopped by the shutter unit. Now, unlike some other Nikon models, this has a traditional shutter unit in it. Some of the newer Nikons do not. They use an electronic shutter, which is a topic we'll get to later on in this class. This has a traditional shutter in there. But normally when you put a lens on and turn the camera on, it is open so that the sensor can read information and send that to the monitor and the electronic viewfinder so that you can see and compose your images. Now, when it comes time to take a photo and you press down on the shutter release, well, there's a lot going on. So I'm gonna show you the shutter unit and the sensor from both the side angle and the front angle. What happens is it's open to start with so that you can see and compose. The first shutter then closes so that the sensor can prepare to capture an image. This is your moment of exposure. And then the second shutter unit will come in and close. And then it will open again so that you can see and compose your next shot. So there's a lot of little movements going on in the camera while all of this is going on. Now this is a full mechanical shutter that I am showing you in this case. And this camera has some options that we're not gonna get into quite yet. Uh, but if you want to dive ahead, you can go into the custom setting menu under shutter type and you can control the different options. I will be discussing this further and in much greater detail in section five on capture controls because there's a lot going on here. But just as far as the basic operation, this is how the camera would normally work. And those are your most critical components in a camera like this. Now, the most important element in any camera is the image sensor. And one of the most important parts of it is the size of the image sensor. And there are lots of different cameras that have lots of different image size sensors in there. This uses one of the largest standards in the industry, which is based off of 35 millimeter film. Now there's nothing magic or perfect about 35 millimeter film. The only thing that was really great about it, it was it was a nice compromise between relatively small size, but big enough to get really good image quality. And that's what this carries forth. And so the image sensor on this is roughly 24 millimeters by 36 millimeters. It's a little bit larger than some of the other sensors that are being used in other popular cameras out on the market at this time. Now, when you turn the camera on, what happens is that there is a little a window, you might say, right in front of the sensor that shakes to knock any sort of dust off. And so if any dust gets in on the sensor, the automatic sensor cleaner will do a pretty good job of cleaning it. Now, it's not perfect, and it's possible that you may get dust on your sensor that does not shake off, and there are manual ways of cleaning it that I'll talk more about later on in the class. The shutter release, obviously very important button on any camera. We have two major command dials on this camera. We have the main command, which is in the back. You'll operate that with your thumb usually. And then the sub command dial on the front of the camera. These are used for changing shutter speeds, apertures, but it can also be used for many other settings and changes within the menu system and on the operation of the camera. Now looking over on the back of the camera, we have a photo video switch. Now this is very important as to whether the camera is gonna be set up to shoot still photos or videos. And when it's in one mode, it can't do the other thing. And so you want to make sure that this is set towards the types of images that you are wanting to record. There is a circle on the back of the camera, and I usually forget the name of it. It is officially called the multi-selector, and this is used for going up and down, left and right, for navigating the menu system, as well as some of the other options that are available in the camera. In the middle of that is an OK button. That is essentially your Enter button. When you go into the menu system and you want to select something, you're going to typically press the OK button. There is also a little joystick for your thumb there that is officially called the Sub Selector. Now, key thing to know here is it is a button as well as a controller. 
uh, for going left, right, up and, up and down. But if you press straight in on it, it performs a function like a regular button. And this is something that you can customize that we will see much more about later on in this class. Now the monitor on the back of the camera is a touch screen as well. And some people like that, some people don't. So it's something that you can turn on and off. You can move the focusing point. You can scroll through the menu system. You can enter your name for copyright information. So it'll be useful in many different ways. Now, if you're new to Nikon or you're coming to Nikon from some other camera system, uh, there's a few buttons on Nikon cameras that work a little bit differently. They're kind of safety release buttons in the sense that you have to press down on the button and then turn a dial for them to work. If you just press the button, it does nothing. It's only when the button is pressed and when you're turning one of the command dials does it actually change that particular setting. And so be aware that when you go in there to start making changes is that's how those buttons operate. Now, if you don't like that system, you would prefer to have a button that just presses and then that feature becomes active and you can change it. Uh, there are ways that you can go into the custom setting menu and change how those buttons are controlled. And so if you're coming from a different system and it's awkward and you don't like it, or you just don't like it and you wanna change it, yes, this camera is highly customizable. And as I go through this class, I'll be explaining a lot of this customization. And then much later on in the class, when we get to the menu system, we'll be doing some hands-on changes of all sorts of customization that you can do on your camera. All right, now the shutter release on this is like pretty much all the other cameras out on the market, which is when you press halfway down, it activates the metering system and the autofocus system. Uh, it also wakes the camera up if it happens to be asleep. Cameras tend to take quick naps a lot in order to save battery power. And if you are lost in the menu system and you're not sure how to get out of it, pressing halfway down on the shutter release always returns the camera to its shooting mode. And so knowing where that half down feel is on the shutter release is very important to know about. And so typically you're gonna go through a process of focusing and then shooting photos. Now, if you don't like that operation, you would prefer to focus with back button focusing. That is something that we'll go into more in the focusing section. But if you want to turn off the focusing attribute of that half press on the shutter release, you can do so in the custom settings menu under the AF activation. This is something that uh, more advanced and professional photographers like to do on their cameras so they have more independent control of when they focus and when they shoot photos and that when they shoot photos, it's not changing the focus. And so uh, is this right for you? Well, it depends. It's something we'll talk more about as we get further into this class. All right, one of the most important settings on any camera is the file format. This is the type of file that you are recording when you are shooting still photos. Now there are two basic options, but actually there's three on this camera. The first main option is RAW, which is the full data that the camera is recording from the sensor. This is the original information. It's got the full tonal range. It's got the full color range. It's going to allow you the most manipulation in post-production. And so if you want to adjust your photo a little lighter, a little darker, tweak the colors a little bit, this is going to give you the most control over it. And this is what most serious photographers and most professional photographers shoot with on a regular basis. But we also have JPEGs, which are incredibly convenient. They are smaller in file size because they have been reduced in size. They've been compressed. They don't have as many colors, but you know what? They work really well on most screens. And for most printing projects, they're just fine. They're just a very, very convenient option, but they don't have as much information as the RAW. So we now have a new option, which is a Hive format. And if I had to summarize this as quickly as possible, I'd say it's a new and improved JPEG. It's different than JPEG, but it's a compressed file. It's not a raw, and it's something that is supposed to give you a little bit more information than the JPEG. Uh, JPEG images are quite old in their technology at this point in time, and this is a newfangled, better version of it. And so this is a feature that you can turn on and off. So the main options is whether you're shooting raw and or one of these other options. So when you get into the image quality settings, the first option that I would recommend for most users is going to be raw. This is where you get the most out of the camera. You'll have the most versatility in post-production for adjusting anything that wasn't quite perfect when it comes to exposure or color. 
It doesn't do anything for focus. That's something you got to get right on your own. So it's a 24 megapixel camera. You're going to be getting roughly 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. It's going to give you a fairly large file type. It means you need a little bit larger memory cards, uh, but 24 megapixels is pretty standard these days. Now, when it comes to the JPEG images, there are six different versions. There's fine, normal, and basic. And with each of those, there's two variations on it. And the asterisk just means that it's a little bit higher quality than the one without. So they have six levels, but they have three names for them. Now, this is also a 24 megapixel image. So it's the same resolution, but it's throwing out some of the color and tonal information uh, in order to reduce the file size. So you can get a much, much smaller file size. Now, another option is to shoot RAW plus JPEG, and you can choose any one of the six JPEG options that I talked about there. So if you want to have RAW and JPEG, you can do that as well. Now, I recommend for most people either shoot JPEG or shoot RAW. You usually don't want to end up with two file types every time you take a single photo. It is good for special circumstances when you know that you might need the RAWs, but you know you need the JPEGs for immediate use. And so uh, if that's you, that's a good option. It's just uh, can be a little bit confusing because you end up with double file types. And once you have RAWs, you can create as many JPEGs if you want, as long as you have the time for it. Now, when it comes to the JPEG and HIFE options, uh, there's some things going on here. First up, if you want to change between JPEG and HIFE, you go into the Tone Mode option and you change it from SDR to HLG. It's a standard dynamic range versus a hybrid log gamma range. Now, the difference between these, the big difference on a technical level, is the 8-bit versus 10-bit option. So your standard JPEGs are 8-bit, which means you have 256 colors of red, blue, and green for a total of around 16 million colors, which is going to be pretty good for most any image that is seen on any screen these days. Now, you can take it a little bit further with the HIFE option in 10-bit, where you have 1,024 versions of red, green, and blue, and that'll take you up to 1 billion colors, and clearly 1 billion is a lot more than 16 million. It's not as easily visible to the eyes as these numbers might make you think. Uh, and so if you are going to shoot the HLG or you're interested in it, I encourage you to give it a try, test it out, see how it works for you, make sure it works with all your software. Because when you put the camera in the HLG mode, well, it changes the operation of the camera. There are some things that are just notably different with it. There's going to be a limited ISO range. There are limited features. In fact, let me go ahead and show you a little bit about setting the RAW and the JPEG and then looking at this tone mode in here. So let's go ahead and get our camera set up here. We'll go ahead and dive into the menu system here. And so you want to navigate your way using the multi-controller up to the camera icon and then come over to the right. And then we can work our way down. And the first option I want to look at is image quality. So I did a factory reset on my camera, as you recall from the previous section, and it is currently set at norm, normal. It's a JPEG HIF normal. And I think that's a terrible default position for it, but that's where it is. And if you were interested in shooting RAWs, you would need to go up here to RAW and press OK, and you would see RAW as your selection. Now, if you wanted RAW plus JPEG, well, that's going to be the top items on the list, and they're pretty clear what their options are there. And if you only want JPEG, well, those are on the lower half, and RAW is right there in the middle. For the moment, I'm going to select RAW plus JPEG just so that we can see everything going on in the menu system. So if we uh, come down a little bit, or actually, excuse me, go up one to the tone mode, you can see where we can change from SDR to HLG. So SDR is the JPEG and HLG is the HIFE format. If I was to select this, and let me just come down here, I'm going to change my settings here so that it's only shooting a HIFE, okay? So I have HLG up here under tone mode, so I know I'm shooting HIFE, and under image quality, I know I'm not shooting RAW because it doesn't say RAW. And if you kind of work your way through this menu system, you're going to see a bunch of items that are grayed out. 
Now, these are not normally grayed out when you have RAW or JPEG in there. It's with HLG, these things are no longer active and important because they're not used in the HLG or Hyph images here. And so if I come back up and reset this, actually we'll go back to regular JPEGs, which is the SDR. And then we come down, we'll see that we don't have as many items uh, grayed out. There is an item here that is grayed out that is specifically for HLG and that'll turn on when you have HLG on. And so for people who are fairly serious with this camera, I would recommend setting one of the raw settings. Uh, and so we're, we're, we'll say raw in there. If you're not too sure, you can start with JPEG and you can move over to raw. That's kind of how I got started in digital photography. I didn't have all the right software in place uh, because you do need to have the right software to look at the raw images. All right, now image size settings. Now we were talking about the file types. Now this is talking about how many pixels are we recording? So if you're gonna be using JPEG images or HLG, uh, the Hyph images for that fact, you can record a smaller size JPEG if it's just more convenient for you. Now I would usually recommend recording the largest size JPEG that gives you the most versatility down the road and it's not really that much data. It's pretty easy to store on modern hard drives. But if you would prefer to have roughly 14 megapixels or six megapixels rather than the 24 megapixels, you can set that up here to record a smaller size. So perhaps you're recording RAW plus JPEG. Well, you can change that to an even smaller JPEG that's more appropriate uh, for a particular use that you might have it. But for most people, I'm gonna recommend setting this at large and keeping it there most of the time unless you specifically know that you want something less. That's probably the safest option you can make. So that covers a few of the basics that I wanted to make sure everybody was straight with before we got on to the rest of the class. And so now we're ready to tackle some more interesting and challenging sections.